Hey, good morning, everybody. It is Saturday, and this is Multifamily Unplugged. Uh, glad that you are here this morning. And if you are new to the show, please make sure that you uh, like us, love us, and smash the subscribe button. Hey, I, I can't believe it's the end of the year already. Here we are, December. You know, 50 of these Saturdays have blown by already, and uh, we have just been able to um, continue to bring good content to you on Saturday morning. Great guests. And, you know, I have another one for you here this morning. But uh, how's your year finishing up? You know, I, I, I bring that out because I want to know, have you been strong? Are you finishing strong? Did you keep your commitments throughout the year? How did your your planning go, your goal setting go? And did you reach your goals? Did you achieve what you were trying to achieve? And how are you setting yourself up for 2024? You know, let me just mention that uh, December 28th, we are doing our uh, annual planning and goal setting uh, session. I have uh, my planning and goal setting guide is out. You could DM me, I'll send you a copy of it. But love to have you join us for, uh, you know, 60 minutes to just talk through goals, goal setting, business planning. You know, I use a business planning system called a 135 that gets used by a lot of major corporations in the country. And, you know, I have found it to be very effective with my coaching clients and uh, in my own business, building strategies and systems and being able to achieve the goals that you set for yourself. So, uh, if you, uh, you know, are available at that time, don't hesitate to register, DM me, I'll send you the link for that. Uh, hey, if you are out on YouTube this morning, please smash the subscribe button. You know, we're always bringing great guests, new content, new information for you to learn from. If you are on Facebook, join our community at Multifamily Unplugged, where there's a lot of networking going on and a lot of uh, information. And you're going to see all the new things that we're going to be doing in the coming year. So glad that you're here. Uh, my guest today, and buckle up for this one, uh, JJ Hadley, BAB Investments from Wyoming in the multifamily business. Let's bring uh, JJ in. Hey, good morning. How you doing, Mike? I'm good. How are you? Good Pretty to good. see you. Thanks for, I, thanks for having me. I know that uh, we're both in each other's email streams and I see your stuff all the time and I know you see mine and right. um, it's been a while. So glad to finally connect though. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Hey, uh, so you're in Wyoming. What's the weather like out there right now? It's snowing as we speak. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. Much, it's, been, uh, it's been pretty cold. It's nothing uh, accumulation right now on the ground, but it, it's, it's coming this way. Yeah. Um, have it first snowfall this year or? Yeah, it's about the third one, actually. Nothing major, but um, I'm about 180 miles south of Jackson Hole, Yellowstone, all that. So I heard last night they got about 16 inches of snow. So it's wow. coming. Are you a skier? I am, snowboarder. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah. So you, uh, I, I've always heard and always wanted to go to Jackson Hole. Um, I've heard that it's like one of the best places in the country. Yes, sir. Yep, I rec highly recommend it. You have to get out there one of these days. The nice Tetons. Yeah. So um, I, I always kick my show off, JJ. I ask uh, my guests, you know, in, in one word, what best describes you personally and professionally? One word uh, for uh, personally be a family man. I love my family and spend a lot of time with my kids and, and uh, professionally as a go-getter. Nice. Good for you. Um and, you know, have you always been that way or is that something that shifted for you in recent years or? No, I've always been that way. Um, the family, you know, the family is always close to me, um, making sure they always come first. And then uh, the professional side is that, you know, my dad always taught me that, you know, you, you got to work, work hard to get far in this in this life. And um, that's what we've always done. You know, um, I. Uh, in the multifamily world, I see myself as an asset manager because I like to be more hands on. Um, and that's what I've always done in my life before, before this, I was, a, uh, I worked at a Trona mine here locally for 10 years. And so, mm. um, I recently just stepped out of my W2 job a couple of years ago, doing multifamily full time. So say it again, what were you doing in your W2? I was, I was a machinist. Um, I, I work at a, tr a Trona mine. Um, it, it's a, uh, Trona is a, a rock that's, uh, 
the mine here, they bring it up from underground, 800 to 1,000 feet underground. They mine it, they bring it underground, and then they, they make soda ash out of it, which is uh, like baking soda. Uh, it's in glass, um, detergents, toothpaste, cat litter. They make a lot of stuff out of it. Glass is their number one producer. Wow. Chemical. So I, I, I uh, overseen a lot of the assets on, on the, the, the mine itself and kept the pumps running and um, worked in a shop there. You know, it's interesting. I, I swear every time I have somebody on, I learn something new, you know, and hey, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not a young kid anymore. And right. this is the, you know, I, I grew up um, not too far from a couple of quarries. And, uh, you know, I always just kind of thought that, you know, they just dig rock out of there. But you're, you're really saying that hey you know when they dig down they're really getting some specific kind of rock and product right. that they actually use that's interesting um so yeah, it's a geological rock it was it's like 80 to you know 100 million years old on 800 feet to a thousand feet underground and it's it's very hard and so they've got to mine it with a big miner and then they bring it up top and they crush it they put chemicals in it but now that they're starting to do a new solution mine um, they're going to drill with drilling rigs, and that's what they're building right now outside of our community right now. That's why they're expanding so much. Um, they're going to drill down and then pump steam down and then pump it up as a liquid now instead of a rock. So they'll yeah. liquefy it underground itself. So how big of a town do you live in there? It's about 30,000 people. Okay. So is everybody like work? Is that what everybody does in the oh, town? I would say uh, over 50, 60 percent of the people that, that live in the in this, you know, this town um, have some shape or form family member working at the at the, the trolling line. That's a huge industry here. We have a little bit of oil field, um, some other small uh, industry, but most of it's the mining, some coal mines, that kind of stuff. But most of it's trolling. So what got you uh, what got you involved in real estate or the multifamily business? Uh, you know, talk a little about your history in that. Sure. So, like I said, I, I just um, I've always had a passion for real estate. Just didn't know how to get started. Um, one summer, my my business partner uh, Brett, he lives in Dallas Fort Worth. He came up here, was traveling. Um, we were sitting out in the backyard, and I just told him, like, you know, I I see more than just going to a W two job every day. There has to be more out there. And he's like, well, you've always liked real estate. Why don't we buy some real estate together? And so that's what we did. We started uh, smaller multifamilies here locally in Wyoming since, uh, you know, I was here local and I could, I, I, you know, like I you like using my hands. I was managing them myself. Um, we bought um, 10 units in 2020 and we kind of ran out of cash. You know, we just we used um, some of our savings that we had up and we're like, all right, well, there's got there's got to be a way to scale here. And so we actually joined the the Brad Sumrock group in Lives, and um, we, we heard a lot about him and um about how you could scale and, and do syndications. And that's how we got into the multifamily. Uh, we went through his course and, and he kind of taught us how to, uh, to buy the multifamilies and, uh, and uh, get going. So that's what we did. We bought our first 60 unit, 2022, and then kind of just scaled from there. We got um, some units up in Nashville, Clarksville area, some in Georgia, just kind of scaled it from there and we're just gonna keep growing. And um, do you have a market that you really like more than another? Or? Dallas Fort Worth, we like it. We think, you know, we always try to go to markets that have a tailwind and we think that that's, you know, it's really growing down there. Um, you know, I don't know the numbers, but they're growing, you know, thousands of people a day moving into that area. We love Florida. Um, we've got a couple short term rentals down in Florida. Um, we also do that, that side of our business as well. But, um, you know, the way the insurance and everything is going right now, we've yeah, got to right. get back from there. Yeah. Yeah. I know our in insurance has killed us on our assets in Florida. It's just, you know, it just wipes out your cash flow. You right. know? Yeah. And then you raise rents and people scream because now you're a rich landlord, but they don't understand <laughs> that you got everything going out the other end too. So. That's right. Um, but yeah. Dallas Fort Worth, we have the boots on the ground. That's where my brother lives. Uh, we just got a lot of partners that like that area. So that's our primary area, but we, we really like that Clarksville Nashville area up there too. So. Okay. Yeah, that uh, Tennessee market is um, has been warm. You know, it's been a warm market for a while. Now it's heating up, or yeah. has heated up the last couple of years. So, yes. Um, uh, what's uh, what's your? So I know that you work in. You know, you kind of uh, operate in a space of sixty to one hundred and fifty units. What's the what's the competitiveness in that space? You, is there a lot of competition? A lot of people looking for deals. 
Yeah, and it's just, you know, that's just where we like to stay um, more. We're, I feel like we're, you know, not newbies in this space, but it's somewhere we feel comfortable. We can raise the capital. Um, we haven't really experienced anything large yet. Um, we want to get into, you know, a larger unit, but we're just, we're still in the growth phase right now in our business. Yep. And so raising capital has been a huge, you know, issue this last couple of years. And so um, that's where we like to stay. Um, it's easy to find property management. Um, the, there's a lot of deals in that area. Class C, Class B, that's where we're at. Yep. But we're, we're willing to, you know, look at larger and um, even go up different classes. It's just going to take some time to get there. So your buy box, what, you know, what else do you look for in your buy box? B property, C property, yeah, what, we like bin, to say you know. C plus properties, we'll do B minus. Uh, we like to keep a median household income above 50,000. Um, we, we like to have it within a certain amount of, of uh, school district, churches that, you know, the neighborhoods matter a lot. Um, class, like I said, Class C, we like Class C with the multifamily value add uh, where you can punch in the, the equity and um, the appreciation. So let's talk about the the um, capital raising efforts these days. What you said it's difficult. What's you know what's that been like for you? Where are you? What do you, you, where's your streams of of those people coming that you're building your book of business with? Sure. So my brother uh, is an Air Force grad, and um, he has a lot of military connections. So he's a lot of multifamily. He's he, he's much of he, he, in our business. I'm kind of like the asset manager, portfolio manager, take care of the properties. He's more of uh, capital raising, going on podcasts, um, going on masterminds, joining that kind of stuff and building the capital raise side. So a lot of his his connections are through the military. A lot of my connections are just, you know, local miners that I've worked with, uh, spreading the word locally here. Um, like I told you before, the podcast, we, we knocked down a smaller uh, a multifamily uh, motel. Um, it was a motel, but we converted it over to basically long-term stays. So um, it's just, we JV'd it. We didn't syndicate it, but a lot of that, um, the partnerships and everything came locally from, from investors that I have here. So that's how we pretty much run our business. Okay. Who's your partner? Brett Hadley, my brother. Okay. Okay. Your brother. Nice. Yeah. Good for you. And um, so I, I know you're part of the Brad Sumrock group. Uh, being part of Brad's, I know his community is kind of close knit in that. How uh, how's that going within that community for you know finding people to partner with or raise capital through? Yeah, so the raising the capital through it's not so much raising the capital it's mostly just finding general partners to work with. That's how we most of our partners that we we've, we've dealt with um, on the 60 unit in Fort Worth they were all through the Sumrock Group. We have partnered outside of some rock group on the on the Tennessee property. We just found them through. Um, I think I met you through Michael Blanc. We at the conference down there. We right. just go to conferences and we just found you know certain individuals that wanted were looking for help and needed help taking things down. So we don't necessarily have to stay with some rock, um, but the community is good. It's done well. Um, we're, we're looking outside of there now and trying to grow in other 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 areas um, and uh, look look for other mentors and just keep building our partnerships other other places too. Nice. Good for you. And um, what uh, um, what do you you know, so we know in the multifamily business, there's a lot of moving parts and there's sure. a lot of things that have to get done, you know, through the process of closing a deal, but everything from finding a deal. What part of that process are you really good at and you specialize in? What part of the process is your brother good at and does he specialize in? Sure. Are you ready to skyrocket your investment portfolio and leave a legacy? Are you tired of inconsistent returns received in the stock market? Do you think that it may be time you take a look at alternative investment options? Passive investing in multifamily real estate could just be that option for you with no tenants, trash or toilets to take care of, but providing a solid return on an annual basis that outperforms traditional investing including monthly and quarterly returns along the way. These lower risk secure assets are a sure hedge against inflation. If you wanna learn more about these types of opportunities, you can email me directly for a 15 minute consultation to see if you qualify. Just email me at mike at mikemorowski.com. So I love the asset management side. I know a lot of people don't, but I like running the business plan. Um, 
I'll, I'll uh, source deals. I don't like to underwrite deals. Um, I will if I have to. Um, I know enough just to get by with the underwriting side, but we like to find someone that has that expertise. I don't like to sit in front of the computer and just look at deals and underwrite deals all day long. Um, but we, I, I love taking the deal once we close the deal and oversee the property manager, um, run the business plan, making sure we're doing all the multifamily renovations, get continuing to, you know, make the NOI as high as we can. I, I love doing that. I love forcing the appreciation. Um, my brother, he, he loves to talk to people. He loves podcasts. Um, I'm not that kind of guy. Um, uh -huh. you, you asked me to be on here and I was like, all right, we'll, we'll do it. But I'm, I'm just not that guy to go out and just promote podcasts and do that and, and, and talk to people. He's more of the front runner. He's a really good speaker. He likes to go out and, and promote it. So that's what he specializes in. Well, make sure you connect us because sure. I'll have him back on too. Absolutely. We'll have him on next year again too and uh, see where you guys are at at that point. But nice. you know what? I, I just think that it's great. It, it's great content and it's great exposure for everybody, you know, and I think that, you know, it helps you, you know, keep a face out there and, and, help build your business. So, oh, yes. um, what, uh, what are you guys working on right now? So we've got a 60 unit that we uh, made it to the best and final. Uh, we're actually finalizing that right now. Um, offers are due on Monday for the best and final on that. Um, it's Where's 60, that one at? It's in Fort Worth. Uh, we own one in Fort Worth, a 60 unit, and this is two blocks away from that one. So we actually, it was ideal because uh, we could share property management and maintenance on that property. So we'd have 120 units in that same neighborhood. So we're trying to knock that deal down right now. Nice. And where did that, uh, are you sourcing deals through brokers or on your own or how yeah, are you came, sourcing deals? Yeah, this came from a broker that we uh, know, like, and trust there in the DFW area with GREA. So okay, he knew yeah, that we were that 60 unit right there and he knew that like this would be perfect for us. Yeah, nice. Good for you. So, so one of the things I know is that there's a, there's a technique or a system that I think Brad really touts it is, you know, the back of the napkin evaluation. And so when you're looking at a deal for the first time, broker sends you an offering memorandum across the desk. How are you looking at that in a short five minute period to see if you want to take it to the next level and, and you know, blow it up in your underwriting tool? So the first thing we look at is uh, we do the same thing that you asked before, what's your, your criteria? You know, um, it's got to, it's got to meet that, that bottom line criteria of, you know, the median household income, where is it at? Um, there's a certain neighborhoods, you know, that we won't buy in. And so that's the, that's the first thing we looked at. And then we're just going to use that formula that Brad taught on the back of the napkin of the NOI. It's got to be a certain percentage that we have in our formula that, we figure out, and if it doesn't meet that, then we just won't move forward. There's no reason wasting time on that that deal if it, it doesn't meet that criteria. So when you're talking about NOI, it's it's got to be at least fifty percent or below. Correct. And then yeah. from just just looking at that, then then helps you make a decision whether or not you're going to go forward on that. Yeah, we'll just make a decision if we're going to, you know, start getting more involved with the broker, ask for more better financials, uh, send it to our underwriting team and, and see if we're going to, you know, spend more time on it. If it doesn't even meet the bottom criteria, then we're not going to waste our time on that deal. Yeah. And, you know, this last year, you know, that a lot of those deals haven't met that, you know, with the with the, the prices haven't been, you know, the sellers just the prices haven't been there. We haven't got a, a whole lot of stuff to really pencil out this year with among a lot of syndicators. But. Um, this is the time to buy. I think that it's starting to turn. Um, interest rates are starting to drop and uh, we're starting to see some prices come down on um, a lot of properties. Yeah. Also, you know, you know, a lot of people are forced to sell right now with their bridge debt coming, you know, due and it's a time to buy. You know, I've been seeing, you know, it's been interesting lately is I've been seeing deals coming back on the market again. So like we might have looked at something a year ago. It didn't pencil out, but it's back on the market again. Yeah, we're seeing and that too. Yeah, I, I keep all my own old underwriting so that I can go back and look and say, you know, oh, I looked at this before and here's what it looked like before and here's where I think it is now. And it, it really kind of gives you a good comparison. Correct. So. Um, yeah, it's funny you say that because uh, one of our partners on the deal that we're buying now, 
uh, he was on the webinar and had all the information from the previous sellers. So we went back and we kind of compared of what, where it is now and see if they could, if they did what they said they were going to do with their business plan and he knew what they had to sell the price for. So it's, it's good to do that, to keep all that. Yeah, for sure. What, um, uh, so a little bit more about your team. So uh, how many other people on your team? Are you guys all part of the general partner team or is that just you and your brother? Yeah, me and my brother, we own VAB. Um, we'd like to, you know, bring some other partners on and be under the VAB name or even another name. Um, we're just not there yet. Um, most of our partners have their own business and we just basically take, you know, we partner up as a partnership to take down uh, an apartment complex under our different businesses. But that's our main goal is to, you know, find a uh, an underwriter, uh, an acquisition guy, project manager, you know, asset manager full time, and then just under the BAB umbrella, basically, and build a team that we can just go out and buy under the BAB name. Um, we've talked to different partners that, you know, that um, in, inside and outside of some rock that want to do that. It's just a matter of getting it structured right. Yeah, interesting. Good for you guys. Well, uh, so uh, on the raising capital, do you have any systems or tools that you use to attract people to your, you know, uh, day, uh, to your website or to your community? You know, what are you guys doing to attract capital? So we joined uh, the Smart Syndicator with Brandon Wong, um, and he owns a CRM uh, that we started doing our marketing through him. And that has helped a lot with our email campaigns, uh, our social media. Uh, we've got some eBooks and it's to send people to our website. And so that's pretty much what we do right now. Um, we do attend a lot of the conferences and meet um, good people, but I think this year we're going to, you know, kind of pivot away from uh, most of the gen. I think we've got enough people now that we've built to surround ourselves with general partners. Now we got to start focusing on limited partners. So my business partner and I decided that we're going to start, you know, maybe get outside of, of, of real estate, the conference itself and maybe start going to some like car shows or something that attracts accredited investors, you know, something that we could um, spread our business that way. Sure. Well, that's interesting. I'm always looking at other things to go to and I never thought about a car show. Yeah. Oh, God, you know, cars are, you know, especially vintage cars or muscle cars, you know, that's right. cars are so expensive that, you know, people obviously have some money. Yes. So when I think back, uh, you know, when I was younger and a couple of the cars that I had, God, why didn't I keep those? You know, <laughs> they've been worth some money, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Especially the uh, I had an old 442 uh, convertible 68. That was a beautiful car. And uh, nice. God, I sold. Yeah, I sold that. Um where where do you see the market at right now? Where do you see the market going? So I see the market right now. It's starting to do a small pivot. Um, I seen that Freddie just lowered interest rates again a little bit this 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 morning, um, and so uh, I, I think it's going to change. A little, it's been a little tight, been a little rough going in, but I think um, interest rates are going to start dropping. I think the market's going to turn. I think there's a lot of bridge debt coming available that, that people are going to have to be forced to sell. They can't refinance because the NOI that they've done um, over the last year with the high interest rates has eaten a lot of their cash flow up. And so I think uh, you're going to see a lot of properties come on the market within the next year or so. Do you think that that average guys like you and I are going to have an opportunity and and to 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 buy those? And and here's why I ask because. You know, if you remember six months ago when that Houston deal blew up, that 3,000 right. units, mm -hmm. um, you know, Freddie was the lender on that. Freddie called up an inside operator and said, hey, I, you know, we have this deal. We know you're a good operator. We know you're an experienced operator. We'll sell this to you at a discount. How much insider trading do you think is going to go on versus how many of those deals are actually going to hit the market? for average average investors like you and I? So I think it comes down to your your broker relations. If you've got a good relationship with some good brokers in the markets, they're going to bring you deals if they know that you can close the deals. Um, I don't think you need to be an institutional buyer to get all the deals. Now, there are bought to be some inside trade, like you said, um, you know, before the mark, before they even hit the market. But I think there's still going to be some C class, B class deals that the institutional buyers aren't going to be interested and they're going to be in, you know, the A class, B plus class 
um, taking those larger deals down. I still just think there's going to be some C-class properties that are going to be available for us. Yeah. You like value add? I do. Where's your skill set in value add? I love the asset management, overseeing the construction um, and pushing the equity into the renovations, uh, thinking outside the box. That's that's the thing with, you know, anybody can buy an apartment complex and um, but you, it, you got to run a business plan. It's running a business. And if you can't run that business plan and, and do what you say you're going to do to to increase the NOI to return the money to your investors, you're just not going to get repeat investors. So that's the name of our, our brand. Um, BAB investments actually stands for badass brothers. I know my brother's bald and everybody thinks it's bald and beautiful, but it's not, it's badass brothers. So we kind of leave oh. that in, you know, <laughs> I'm going to have to remember that when I have them on. <laughs> yeah. um, hey, uh, so what do you think the top three things? So we know in asset management, there's a lot that you need to pay attention to, to make sure everybody else is doing what they're doing. Um, what are the top three to five uh, K KPIs, those key performance indicators that you pay attention to a lot that really make sense? So we keep an eye on our property management's traffic. We want to know, you know, what kind of traffic they're bringing into the place. And if that's, they're not, then what are we doing with our marketing and advertising to get the traffic to come to that, that particular unit? Um, on our weekly calls, that, well, that's one of the key indicators that I look at. Um, pretty strongly. And if they're not having the traffic, what can we do to fix it? Um, the occupancy, of course, if we can bring an, a manager in um, that can get above a 90% occupancy, then how hard are we pushing those rents? Um, if we can keep it, you know, if it's if it's dropping into the, you know, mid 80s, high 80s, um, maybe we're, we're, we're not, you know, we, we can get it to up to the 90, but we need to make sure that we're, how hard are we pushing those rents? Um, so that's what I look at. Like on one of our properties right now, we're at a 95% occupancy, and I'm like, well, how hard are we pushing the rents? And there's a lot of uh, rent comps and market analysis that I've, I've done. I was like, well, you know, our competition down the street's doing a little bit better. And so I think we can push a little harder. It might drop the occupancy a little bit, but that's one of the key indicators that I look at. You know, everybody wants this high occupancy, but maybe you're not pushing the rents hard enough. You know, if you have so much high occupancy, maybe if you push a little harder, it might drop the occupancy a little bit. We can get higher rents. So that's one of the things that I look at. Nice. What uh, when when you're doing upgrades on units and you're doing unit turns, where do you think you're getting your best return um, from? What are you actually doing to a unit that's that people are kind of giving them a wow factor? or They're going to have a better experience if they rent from you. So on a, it just depends on what class of property you're looking at. So on a C class property, I mean, you don't want to, of course, go in with granite and that kind of stuff into there, but um, maybe some of the units you do, I mean, and just play around with it, just depending on the, the neighborhood and, and what, where you're at. Um, but I think when I walk into a unit, I just want to see there's certain contractors that have a different touch. And I mean by that is that um, I, I, I know being an asset manager and I, and I can renovate and do sheetrock and um, hang framing and the paint, and I just know the, the, the touch of it. You can see their their, their work, of basically, if, if they're a good contractor or not. And so I think when you walk into a unit, you can basically see, as I can, is to see if it was a very good, uh, basically, the work of a contractor. Did he did he do the flooring right? Did he do the paint texture right? Did it just slob? There's a couple of units that we walked into after our contractors, and they had paint on the, the, the light switches, on the fixtures. They It's just not... You know, that's the stuff that tenants are going to see, you know, it's the shoddy work. And so we, 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 hide, we, we try to uh, keep our contractors to a higher level and, 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 make, and if they know that right off the bat and they know that that's, we're going to go inspect the unit right after them. So they know that they're not going to be able to do that. So, and it's hard to find good help right now. And so we just try to hold them to a different level. And I think when a tenant goes in there and they see that, you know, is there scratches on the appliances or, you know, that they just moved in? brand new appliances, that kind of stuff. I think the tenant's going to see that. Yeah. Hey, um, what, what you made a comment about hard to find new help. Um, do you think that you, it, it's still a struggle to find good craftsmen, good labor in this market? Um, I would say yes and no. Um, I think that if you pay them right, then I think they're going to, you know, that's the thing about it. Is just you got to keep your payroll there. You got to keep. Uh, 
our mains guy, you know, you're going to get what you pay for right now. And there's just so much competition and everybody's moving in and, and everyone's hired, right? Because everyone's in the same predicament as we are. So I think it's better. We, our motto is, that you, you know, your people will stay if you treat them right. And when you treat them right, it's not just about pay either. A simple thank you will go a long ways. And yeah. uh, we haven't had a whole lot of turnover with this property since we had our new property management come in. And so um, we take care of them, you know, just a little small gifts for Christmas, that kind of stuff. A Starbucks coffee when we go to visit the property goes a long ways with our property management. So, so yeah. But I think uh, the trades is going to be a little bit difficult now. Finding good plumbers, electricians. I mean, let's just get real. It's the, gener the generation now. They just don't want to do that kind of work. They want to be in the tech world. And um, I think over the next, you know, uh, five, ten years in the multifamily world, it's going to be a little bit difficult to find good trades to come in and do good work. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, you know, it, it's it's be some of it's become a lost art. You know, I yeah. know when we were younger that, you know, people went into the trades and, right. you know, today for somebody with so much opportunity in social media or, you know, tech, uh, crypto, all the other places people can make money, right. you're not seeing the younger generation go to be a plumber or electrician or, you know. HVAC's got a huge one too. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. So uh, what are you working on now? Why should people give you a call? So right now we're working on um, a 39 unit motel conversion again here in Rock Springs. Uh, we've got a huge, uh, like I said, the Toronto mines are expanding. There's a, a huge influx of contractors that are going to be coming in our way. We're talking like five to 6,000 contractors um, for a town that's 30,000 people. So we're, we're buying these motels and we're, we're kind of converting them over to a long-term apartment. And so, uh, Bill Gates is building a $5 billion uh, nuclear power plant 80 miles from us, and they don't have no housing for that. So we're trying to take advantage of right now of, of, of buying some stuff local here. And so, uh, yeah, the, if anyone's interested in the, the Wyoming market, just uh, reach out uh, at babinvestments.org. My brother's contact information's on there, mine's on there, and get a hold of us, and we'd love to have a chat. Perfect. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you. Thanks, uh, one last question. What's the best book you've ever read? So when I first started out, um, I wasn't much of a reader, but um, just like anyone, Rich Dad, Poor Dad probably got the the, uh, the uh, start of my career of, of out thinking outside the box with assets and getting my son. So I love Robert Kiyosaki and I promote anything that he does. So, Yeah, good for you. Well, thanks for being here. I appreciate you. Uh, look forward to connecting with your brother. I know that you'll do yeah. that for us and uh, uh, we'll have him on next year and uh, see where you guys are at. Uh, with these hotel conversions then. So uh, hey everybody, thanks for being here. I hope you're having a great December, great holiday season. We will be here next Saturday again at 10 a.m. and look forward to seeing you then. Take care.